You're listening to Welcome to Eloma, a podcast for highly ambitious dreamers who get shit done. I'm your host, Kylie Peters. This is a space where we talk about pivoting when things don't go as planned. So for all of my entrepreneurs out there, we know that the only thing constant is change. I mean, I guess that's true in in life, but especially in tr- true of entrepreneurship. Um, you know, we we can create a plan and we can work towards executing that plan, but there's always going to be things that come up unexpectedly. And, you know, there's the saying of whatever the percentages are, but, um, you know, life is really based on what you, how you respond to things versus, you know, necessarily what happens. So uh, our response to change uh, can really dictate a lot. And, uh, you know, that's something that we all know a, a lot about um, coming out of the last few years. I mean, everything has been change. And, and in that sense, it's also been really exhausting. You know, so much change. I mean, change is always happening, right? But that much change for that long is exhausting. And so you think that we're all um, experts at change at this point in time, experts at pivoting, but there's always things that throw us for a loop. Uh, And one of the things that I've started to realize is, uh, okay, so, you know, I'm a type A control freak, but there are some things I can control and there are some things I can't control. And when it comes to change and trying to adjust accordingly, here are a few things that I've realized we can control and things that we can't control. So uh, we can control uh, what ourselves, right? We can control ourselves. And in many cases, not all cases, but in many, our time, the technology that we're utilizing, our deliverables, the quality of our deliverables, the work that we're doing, and you know the things that we directly manage. The things we can't control are people, other people, as well as any worldly circumstances, as I mentioned, we are all very familiar with. And I think it's also important to recognize um, that doing new things also requires a bit of time for people to catch on to. So for me, as I uh, spent six years building Brainchild Studios uh, and then spent the last year of that closing things down to launch Rain 9, um, I had spent my entire career up until that point with people recognizing that I'm a marketing expert. And uh, it's taken a little bit of time for people to recognize the shift in the work that I'm doing Um And there's also a lot of education that goes along with that, right? And for anybody else who has found themselves in a place of pivot, um, I'm sure you're feeling similarly. It just takes some time for people to realize that you're no longer the insert, you know, previously known title here, and you're now moving on to this next thing. Um, And so for us, there's been a lot of, changes, (laughs) changes, <laughs> uh, a lot of changes. So, um, you know, when, when making the shift from brain child to rain nine, when I started, when I first started rain nine, doing the work with rain nine, we started with one-on-one workshops and it was amazing. And we are changing people's lives, like truly changing people's lives. And I was like, yes, this is working. This is exactly how I thought it was going to be. This is great. Um, but then I was like, well, I can't scale this and I know that we are doing such great work and I want to bring this to many more people. And so then we started launching these group workshops and retreats. Um, And in many ways, they're still very successful, but uh, it's been (laughs) for somebody who's lived so much in the digital space. I don't think I had a true appreciation for how challenging it is to produce an in-person event and not, I mean, it's, it's challenging to schedule people's time, especially three days at a time. It's challenging the cost of it. 
it's, it's just, it's a lot. There's a lot. And as we've realized that the people we are best suited to serve are uh, women who are looking to leave corporate um, and launch their consulting or coaching or consulting practice, we've also realized that's a really difficult ask to ask someone who has a full-time job to leave their full-time job for three days to learn how to permanently leave their full-time job. So we were like, okay, so maybe that's not the best format. And so what we have decided is while we're still doing the the one-on-one three-day workshops, because it is a great solution for anybody who has, you know, lost their job or gotten laid off, et cetera, um, and needs a solution right now. Uh, we've realized that a lot of the women who are in corporate and are looking to leave corporate, they're planners, just like just like me. And um, many of them have a six to 18 month runway that they're trying to figure out, right? So we're refocusing our energy to take the education from the Defining Success uh, workshop, one-on-one and the retreats, et cetera. And we're building out a six-month digital masterclass to help women leave who are wanting to leave corporate navigate that path in um in a six month time frame versus trying to crash course it and then figure out the rest of it on their own. So we're really excited about this. We have talked to a number of women about this so far and have received great response. So if you're listening to this, um definitely check out Rick's R I X masterclass.com and uh, take a look at what we're building out. I believe it's going to be the best that there is. Um, I've learned a lot of things and taken a lot of classes and gone to a lot of retreats and all the things. Um, and this is the best of all the things in my, in my very biased opinion, but we're really excited. This will be launching in October of 2023. And um, I really hope we have the opportunity to change many, many, many more lives. Um, so that's been one change, one pivot, you know, as we started so- and found something that was wildly successful. We tried to scale it in a way that probably wasn't the right solution for our audience. And now we're um, making another pivot to better meet them where they're at. Um, another another big thing that has happened for us in uh, over the last year is we made a significant investment in a prominent CRM marketing automation software company. Um, And it's taken us, it's taken a collective commitment of about seven months and hundreds of hours and more money than I care to admit out loud (laughs) um, to implement. And uh, I've never gone through a process this intense before. We've tried so many different CRMs over the years. um, And I'm not going to name names because I don't, you know, some people might like certain CRMs better than others and that's fine. Um, But we've tried so many and we've always tried to do it ourselves. And I was like, okay, you know what, this time we're going to make the investment. We're going to go all in. We're going to hire an implementation team. Um, It's going to be great. And it was a very steep learning curve. It was a new experience for me. I just didn't realize, I just didn't realize um, how much, how intense that process is or was, um, at least from from our experience. Um, But it was a great exercise in helping me to get things out of my head. I don't know if anybody listening also feels like you tend to sometimes be the bottleneck purely because everyone's like, oh, okay, well, we're just waiting on you to tell us what's in your brain so we can do something with it. That happens a lot in uh, my world. And sometimes not all of the things in my brain should be coming out. <laughs> sometimes it's better that they uh, stay locked in a drawer or a closet, whatever that is in my brain. Um But so we've been diligently working at getting this up and running. We had launched it, but it still hadn't been functioning properly. None of the automations or anything were working. Um, And with additional changes that have been happening in in our company, um, 
I was like, you know what? I think I just got to trust. I just got to call it on this. You know, over the last few months, I've, I've had these wavering thoughts and like, oh, maybe this isn't the right fit for us. Maybe this wasn't the right choice, et cetera. But I ignored it and um, just kept going through. It was like, okay, just don't, don't quit before it's there, right? Don't give up before it's there. But I realized I should have trusted my gut because we realized that this platform that we've invested in is just, it's just not the right one for us. It's just not. And it breaks my heart and my bank account <laughs> to say that. But I also, you know, I'm thinking long term and it's like, okay, if this is not working for us now, it's not going to be better as we complicate things, as things go th- down the line. Like we're still going to have all these fees and, you know, all, all the associated costs and time and labor and all the things that come with it. So it was a really painful decision to make to say, okay, we have to switch. Um, and so we've made a switch and we are, um, really excited about it. We're really excited. Um, and I I'm hesitant to talk about which platform we're switching to yet because we are still in the process of making that shift. But so far I'm really excited about it. Um, we have uh, we have a new implementation team that we're excited about working with, and we are working on automating so many things. So everything from our sales nurturing sequences to our marketing email automation to certain operational things. So we're really excited about where the opportunities with this new um, platform and this new software. And I really hope that, you know, two, three, four months, six months from now, I still feel the same way. So stay tuned. But uh, it's been a really, it's been something that's really been weighing on me a lot and taking up a lot of mental, emotional space. Um, And it's also taken up so much time for myself and from my team, as well as from our implementation partner. And I wish that it had worked out, but it just wasn't the right fit. Um, and it's also a good thing because uh, a couple of weeks ago, on the same day, both of my employees who have been with me for over four years uh, announced the shift in their availability. So that requires us to adjust the way that we operate and plan to operate as a business. Um And uh, at first it was a shocker. Like it, um, it hurt, it hurt. But uh, I was also super, super proud of my team for voicing what they needed and voicing what was best for them. And after a lot of really great transparent conversations amongst all of us, um, I think we've agreed that this is the best for everybody. And uh, I'm I'm super excited for all of the different opportunities that lie ahead for everyone. So what we did in uh, in having those conversations was just stayed super open in talking through it and setting new priorities to make sure that we're all on the same page and that everything's taken care of and nothing falls through the cracks as we um, adjust to this new working reality uh, together, you know? So um, so I say all of that because I've been doing this for a minute and it's everything. There's always change. There's always pivot. There's always something, Right. Um, sometimes we see it coming, sometimes we don't, but I just thought it might be helpful to hop on here, share a few different things that we've been going through in terms of changes and see if it helps anybody else navigate change. Um, and I tried to come up with like a snappy, like, you know, five things to think about when you're navigating change. And and this is what I've come up with. So, um, there might be some fine tweaking here, but I'm going to, I'm going to probably put these on a post-it note and stick it up on my wall next to me, uh, to remind me too. So when, when change comes or when something unexpected happens or something's not working out or anything like that, where a decision needs to be made, this is what I would recommend. 
One, number one, I would say resist your immediate response. So often when we get news that is not ideal, we fire back in a hasty text or Slack or email or whatever it is, right? And that's 99.9% of the time, not what you really wanted to say, right? Or not how you really felt or, or wasn't well articulated. Um, so resist that immediate response. Uh, for me, the next thing that I did that I found to be super helpful is run the numbers. Uh, I, I love my spreadsheets and I love the numbers because that shows me what's possible. And I have big lofty goals as many people do. Uh, but every once in a while, it's a really good exercise to just scale it back and see, okay, so that's what would be awesome if that happened. But what is the minimum that I need to happen in order for things to all, all be a go, right? So run the numbers. That always gives me a big peace of mind. And then I'd say reevaluate your strategy. So depending on whatever changes are coming your way, sometimes your game plan has to shift. For us, that meant, you know, there are a few things that I wanted to offer that I was like, okay, well, we're just not going to offer that now. Or, um, you know, just lean into certain things that I was like, okay, well, now we're we're definitely going to focus on this or we're definitely going to go in this direction. Um, and find all the different ways that you can standardize and templatize so that you can create efficiencies and increase profitability along the way. Along with reevaluating that strategy and resetting that strategy is reprioritize tasks. So make sure that nobody, yourself included, is spending time and energy on things that no longer need to happen. So, um, you know, some people say like, stop the bleed. So whether that's like from a financial standpoint or um, just like running menial tasks that no longer need to happen, uh, just reprioritize the tasks to realign with your strategy. And then uh, the last I think this is five R's, uh, is re-engage proactively and transparently. Uh, again, like, I, and I know that this is a special circumstance because not everybody has teams that they feel they can be super honest and open and vulnerable with, but I highly recommend you work on building that team. Um, because when you have the people in your life that you can be open and honest and vulnerable and transparent with, you can really get a lot farther, faster. Um, you know, it's it's a whole different ballpark when you have people operating in silos and not communicating with each other. And then you wonder why things didn't get done or, you know, people are blindsided. So those would be my five R's. Again, they might get tweaked along the way, but right now, um, if you are running into change and you are finding that you need to pivot, here are the steps that I recommend you consider. One, resist an immediate response. Take some time to think about it. Two, run the numbers to see what's possible and what the bare minimum needs to happen. Three, reevaluate your strategy. You know, maybe some things have changed now. Four, reprioritize your tasks. Make sure that nobody's doing things that don't need to be done and that whatever's being worked on right now aligns with your strategy. And then lastly, re-engage proactively and transparently with your team and anyone else who's involved um, that needs to help make your new strategy, your new vision come to life. So... That's that's what I have for you today. Um, thanks for thanks for listening to this solo cast. And uh, for anybody else out there who is navigating change, know that you're not alone. Um, I often believe that you know this is a good thing. Um, if anybody has listened to this before, you've probably heard me say the mantra, this is happening for me, not to me. And that is the very first thing that I um, started to think when all these changes were happening. So always try to find the silver lining. You know, this is happening for me, not to me. Uh, yeah, it, take 
if you're upset or whatever it is, take some time to like just feel that so you can feel it and get through it and then move on. Um, because if you don't, then there's always time that comes up later that just like explodes out of nowhere. Uh, so take the time to feel whatever you're feeling. But then I encourage you to try on the mantra. This is happening for me, not to me. Um, and just see what possibilities and what opportunities lay ahead that you maybe didn't see or, or had it imagined before. So that's, that's that. Um, if you liked today's episode, please go ahead and leave us a review. If you'd like to chat further and learn more about how to navigate changes in your business, uh, head over to rain9.com, R-A-Y-N-E-I-X.com. Take a look at all of the different things that we are offering in terms of helping women uh, launch and grow their businesses. Um, and at the very least, go ahead and sign up for our weekly email. So you'll receive uh, updates on our weekly podcast, as well as tips and tricks on growing your business um, with some fun anecdotes from me based off of whatever's happening in my life at that time. So thank you so much for listening and uh, stay tuned. To continue learning how to better build your business and make your vision a reality, subscribe to the Welcome to Eloma email list at welcometoeloma.com.